training for the entire church is to help you to understand that there are certain things that if you continue to do them, if you don't stop doing them, it will affect you tomorrow. So many things. Now, last week, Sunday, in the first service, we talked about securing your future by sowing a seed of stability. Oh, they have already printed and built for it. God bless you. Thank you. That is, by sowing a seed of stability, that when you are going up, don't tamper with constituted authority. Don't step on elders because you want to go up. And in the second service, we were taught that allow God to put you in position. And if you allow God, God will carry you through what? Process. Process. That there is nothing like what sudden, you know. Now, any sudden miracle you see today, God has been laying the foundation gradually. And if you ask the people that enjoyed what you call sudden miracle, there are certain things they've been doing consistently over the years. Listen. Some of you just read, ah, Anana made a vow, and God gave her somewhere. That vow she made was one of her vows. Anna must have been making, she must have been living a life of vowing before. It's not that they just taught her that day. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is not the day you start sweeping in church that the harvest will come. It is not the day you start working for God that the harvest will come. It will take time. That was what we thought last week. Uh, today, by the grace of God, our study our character will be the man called Judas. Judas. And today we are going to be looking at how if you don't conquer or kill the spirit of the love of money, it will affect your future. On securing your future today, we are studying Judas. John chapter 12, from verse 4 to verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't forget the focus of today. Are we there? Can we have it on screen so that we all can read together? John chapter 12, from verse 4 to verse 6. Let's all be on our feet in honor of God's word as we read these three verses. John 12, 4, 5, 6. Protocols, ushers outside, let's be on our feet. One, two, and let's read. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Lastly, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. Father, we pray that you give us wisdom, give us revelation, speak to our hearts. Help us that everyone will go home with at least a word from you today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Let's be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Now, I believe there is no Christian, either nominal Christian or serious Christian, that will not know the man called Judas. If you mention Judas, it's a teaching that, in fact, even the unbelievers have understanding of that name, Judas, Judas, Judas. But let's not forget that Judas did not start ministry as a betrayer. He didn't start like that. He started well. He too got born again. 
he too joined the church. He passed the test of members and joined the workers. He passed the test of workers and also became minister. You know, there are about three categories of people in every church. We have the floor members. And I think most of our first service is actually like a workers meeting to me. That's why I always preach a harder message, a more hard message in the first service than in the second message service. Because I believe that most of the people that attend first service, mostly 80% are our workers. So Judas passed the test. Everybody starts in church as members. Abi, I is a member of the church. Then when you become committed, not how long you stay, you can be a member for 50 years. It is commitment that will move you from member to worker. That, and I wish, I wish to be part of what is happening. That's when you can become a worker. Maybe in one department or the other, ushering, uh, sanctuary keepers, and things like that. Then, you will discover that it is a commitment, hear me, that will also drive you into becoming a minister. Now, it is not every minister that has what we call direct call. No. Some, it is their commitment that made them to have access. And they will also enjoy the backing of God to a point. So, Judas passed all those tests and became an apostle. How did he now fall to this? Now, and that's one of the things we should learn. He received the anointing of, of an apostle, you know, he was part of them, that the 12 that Jesus chose, that yes, these are my special apostles, whenever I'm going for a meeting, they go with me. Whenever there's anything that has to do with the church, they are the first people I discuss them with, you know, and at times when, what I don't teach members, I teach them. These are my disciples, special apostles, they are 12. He passed that test. But you notice that Judas didn't last. He could not live long enough to join them to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, and there are so many people like that. They are workers, some are members, but they did not, they are not committed enough to get to the point where the mantle that flows from their pastor can fall on them. Now, when we talk about mantle, I'm not talking about only leadership mantle. There is anointing for breakthrough. You know, there's kind of a favor. Like, for instance, now, I carry a kind of favor. There is nothing I want to do in this life that I don't have favor for. Now, for it to rub on you, it is your commitment that will determine it. I, I, am I communicating? How did Judas fall? Now, we also, we have just read it, that the Bible says, he walked out to the point that, you know, the pastor now said, you know what? You, we are going to put the money in your care. So whenever they finish counting the church offering, they give it to Judas. Uh, Judas, go and keep it. Anytime they want to buy anything, you know, Jesus will just signal. He knows how to release money and they will go and buy. But the Bible says because money was with him, he was found of stealing from the money. That was what he used to destroy his future. Stealing from the money. He got to a point. He stole to a point that the money of the church was not enough to sustain him. Judas now decided that, okay, since we didn't have church property, let me even sell my pastor. I will be thief. I will be there. Let me even sell the pastor. And I will show you from scriptures. Let's go there. Let's go there. Uh, let me see if I wrote that one down here. Okay, I, think, I didn't write it. It's just part of the, my jottings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's, it's there. Matthew 26, 14 to 16. It got to a point. The offering was not enough. Offering here, okama, okale no mo. Toba chik babay. Oka problem mo emo. Toba oke kini ka she o. Ade, nin konta leta. Mi she, ya ta pastor na. Pastor go de mo kwanti town. Matthew 26, verse 14 to 16. Eja wo, oya. Eja wo. Matthew 14, uh, uh, sorry, Matthew 26, 14 to 16. Now, those of you at the media, you have to try to be swift. Thank you. 
Then one of the twelve, can you see? Special apostle, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest. Yes, to do what? And said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver my pastor to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. Verse 16. So from that time, he sought opportunity. Can you see? So every time he was coming to church, Pastor Himmler did not know that he was looking for the day he would deliver Pastor to them. Oh, let it go. Now, love of money is the reason why so many people that carry the promise of God, great promise of God over their life, cannot get there. Let's start by saying, what is love of money? The love of money is consciousness for money that you are allowed to block your conscience. I come again. The love of money is consciousness for money you are allowed to block your conscience. The love of money is consciousness for money that you allow to block one thing, your conscience. Yes. Consciousness for money that you allow to block your conscience. You know, everyone that God created, I will show you from scriptures, God put one thing in everyone. He put conscience in everybody. Unbeliever, ni conscience. Believer, ni conscience. Muslim, ni conscience. Christian, ni abolisha. So that's one thing with everyone. So even if a person is saying, I don't have the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that can convict me of my sin. It's a lie. There's, everybody has conscience. It shows that everybody knows good from bad. Now, if, if you understand babies, even when you start having babies, you will see that when, our, when children begin to do the wrong thing, you will notice that they will be looking at your face. They want to see whether you will rebuke them or not. Which means they themselves know that what they are doing is wrong. So, how do you know a person that loves money? It is simple. It's a person that allows his hunger for money to block his conscience. So you will notice that such people, because they want to gain money, they want to get money, they will do things that will make every other person that looks at them to wow. They will do things that will make everybody around them to see them as wicked. Now that's a simple definition of anyone with the spirit of the love of money. And you know, when your conscience is blocked, listen, you will not have regard for people, you will not have regard for principles, you will not even have regard for what is right. When your conscience is blocked. See, one by say, I remember I went somewhere, I wanted to pay, uh, when the, the church at the level wanted to buy meter. So I went to the meter of, of uh, Nepal office around our area. So the money I took there was not enough. I now needed a cash of, uh, I need, I think, 5000 or 10000 Add to the money, for them to do it. They now said there's a POS person around. So I went to the petrol station. And they said, we don't have POS. We don't have POS. Listen, no. but we have the one we use for our customers. I now said, what I just want is 5,000. You know what the man said? If you pay 500 naira, I will do it for you now. Ah. I now ask him, are you not human? Are we not in the same Nigeria? Is it because I'm desperately in need of to collect cash. You now want to collect 500 naira. He just left me and went. And somebody said, this is a POS person beside. So I went to that side. And that person just, I, he didn't know I as a pastor. He said, it's just 100 naira. Now, look at what that person did. Because he wants more profit. He wants to capitalize on my situation as at that time. I needed cash desperately. That's why the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know why? It blocks the conscience of people. 
Once your conscience is blocked, you can't reason like human. You begin to act like a beast. Now, that was what happened to Judas that made him to now decide, ah, would they need the wool? Would they need the wool? Now, if you look at what he did with the money, uh, he wanted to buy land. Ah, the offering is not enough for me to buy this land. What do I do? What do I? So, his conscience was blocked. He now went to them and I will sell, I will sell my pastor to you. When your con- you allow love of money to block your conscience, you will hinder your future. You will kill your future. We are going to study. Let's, let's go deeper. Praise the Lord. Talk to me. Praise the Lord. What will the love of money do? Okay, let's, before we go there, sorry, let's confirm more that we all have conscience. We'll look at four scriptures. Show me very fast, or let's look at three. John chapter 8, 1 to 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. And 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. Let's confirm that from scriptures that everybody has conscience. John chapter 8, from verse 1. Now, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olive, Olives. Let's move on. We take it to verse 9. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them while he was teaching them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, yes, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery. In the very act, Amu, Amu, yes. Next verse. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? What do you say, master? This, they, did, they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stopped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. As if he did not hear. Verse 9. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin, listen, among you, let him throw a stone at her. Verse 8. And again, he stopped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 9, the last verse. Let's read on. Then those who had it, being do what? Being convicted by what? By their conscience. Can you see? They were all believers. But they all have conscience. But people need to hear it. But people need to hear it. Unika luku eri okon en je pe ah to ba de je mi na mu nko elomi ani amu de si la na o won de mu mi ni o and the bible says for conscience sake were convicted went one by one beginning with the oldest even to the least and jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst can you see that everybody has conscience there is nobody that does not know right from left let's look at two more scriptures two more john chapter 8 ah sorry romans 9 Verse 1. Romans 9, verse 1. Are you learning something? I tell the truth in Christ. Now, this is Paul speaking. I am not lying. Even with the Holy Spirit in him, he still said, My conscience also bearing me witness where? In the Holy Ghost. Even with the Holy Ghost in you, you still have a conscience. I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness, me witness, in the Holy Ghost. Verse 16. Verse 16. Yes. Holding the mystery of the faith with what? A pure conscience. Everybody has it. There's nobody that doesn't have it. Except you just purposely deny. Now let's go further into the study. What will the love of money do to anyone that allows it? It will block their conscience. And I ask how? 
it will show you urgent things you should do with money. How does it block your conscience? It will show you urgent things. Ah, you know what people say now? Show Shere Wasiba Doni. Oh, my bridge to Malakoya, Amito Bakoya, Koto de Luim Badan. Are you going to You know things like that. These parables, the devil will be bringing it to your heart and be putting people around you to be saying it to you, to make you block your conscience. That's what we will do. That's why you must not allow it. So many people, because of the love of money, they have destroyed their lives. Today, at times when I see some young ladies dating married men, I will just be laughing. You are dating a married man. You are hurting a woman like you. That's somebody's husband. It's not that they don't know if you are affecting the future. Continue. These are things the devil does to block your conscience. That's why I see. Anytime there's an opportunity to make money, check your conscience. I come again. Anytime there's an opportunity to make money, check your conscience. Anytime there's an opportunity to make money, check your conscience. So that you will not be doing the things that will affect you in the future. Don't allow your need. There could be pressing need. Don't allow what people are saying. There could be people speaking to your, to your ears to block your conscience. Always be thinking of one thing. Life sits on the law of seed time and what? And harvest. Hallelujah. Are we together? I wrote here, please watch. Uh, okay, I've not gotten there. He will show you the honor of having money as well. And it will put temptation for you around it. Please watch it. It made Judas to sell his pastor. And we saw the result. That is the outcome. It cost him his life. If you want your future to be guaranteed, that is to be secured. Do not allow the love of money drive you into doing the things that will bounce back on you tomorrow. That's why I see when people present an opportunity for you to make money, check it very well. I, I was sharing with some young people. There are certain principles you must set up in your life before, you get, before money begins to come. Listen, look up. Number one, you must set a principle of your time with God. That you must not allow love of money to take away from you. Now, under principle of time with God is your time of worship. Under principle of time with God is your tight to God. Under principle of your time to God is anything with God, sorry, anything that will uh, make you sin against God. Even if he's going to give you money, be ready to set it aside. Set these principles before money comes. Once you, you, you set it, I'm telling you, you won't fall. Judas destroyed his future. If you read Acts of Apostles chapter 1, when they were talking about the person to replace Judas, in the statement of Peter, he said, he used to be one of us, but he sold out his position as an apostle because of what? 30 pieces of silver. Let's go deeper. What then should I do to conquer love of money? This is where the message is. Now, saying it is wrong to make money, I'm only saying don't block your conscience because you want money. You know what is right from what is wrong. What will I do to conquer love of money? What then should I do to conquer love of money? Number one, understand and appreciate your size part-time. Understand and appreciate your size part-time. You must understand your size. I know my level. Part time. And I appreciate where I am. It is not that I'm stopping here. So many of us don't know our level. That's why we, we always try to stretch for the things that are beyond us. 
I come again, understand and appreciate your level part time. I wrote here, stop stretching yourself to do the things that is not your level. That's why some people cannot sleep. They are looking for money at all costs. They can lie to get money. They can betray to get money. I was watching one, in, one video on the internet. A young lady was saying, did I kill anybody? That you people are criticizing me. Is it not dog that I slept with? Is it not dog that I had sex with? Because of 1.7 million. Where is her conscience? He said, why are you not castigating me? Is it not dog that I slept with? 1.7 million that cannot complete self contain if you want to build presently. But because the love of money, ah, tell me about it, go, go, buy, go, 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 medulla, it change. Stop stretching your, let me show you something from Ezekiel. Now, look at the levels of life that we have. Ezekiel 47, from verse 2 to verse 5. Ezekiel 47, from verse 2 to verse 5. Ezekiel 47, 2 to 5. Put it on screen. Stop stretching yourself to things that is not your level. Stop it. Don't desire that you cannot maintain. I'm waiting for you to put that scripture online. Don't stretch for a brother. Don't stretch for it yeah, that you know you cannot maintain. I love that girl. I need to marry her. I, whatever it takes, me, I will do. If you can't maintain her, she's not your level. Now, let's go. Look at this. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me out on the outside to the other gateway that faces east and was water running on on the right side. Now, look at the levels of the water. That's the first level of life. Verse 3, water's running on the, at the right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, look at it. He measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. Now, the water came up to what? My ankle. That's the, wait for me here. That's the first level of life. Ankle level of blessing. This is the ankle. Ankle level of blessing. Now, with the ankle level of blessing, you can't swim. Abi, answer me now. If I, with the ankle level of blessing, I don't think you can even bait. If you are going to bait, you be, in fact, you, you have to bend so well to be taking the water gradually. Some people don't know their size. That man, after 1,000 cubits being counted, he said he brought me to the level of what? Ankle. The water was at the ankle level. And Maurice tell me, he said, wow, wow, Gigi. Oh, wow, ni go go on, ni pay one more level, one one try, that is stretch. And some of you, what is making you so stretch? It's not something that you should die about. Ah, my mommy is suffering. My mommy is suffering. I want to bring her out of suffering. If you cannot bring anybody out of suffering, leave them to suffer. And be praying for them. Instead of saying, I will do what I can do to make sure they come out of struggling and you throw your, your salvation away. Go back and find out. That money that Judas collected, they still use it. To, he returned it to, they bought the land with this and they used that burial site still today. The first level is the ankle level of blessing. Look at the, the second one. Verse 4. Let's read on. Verse 4. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to where? To my knee. Can you see? That's the second level of blessing. The knee level. That's the level. I used to think I, used to think I, knew, I, I, I know how to swim. In those days when we were young. Ah, my friends, we go to the river. I will now lie straight. They will be swimming. I will lie straight on the river and be using my hand, you know, to move under. They didn't know. I'll be using my hand to, to touch the floor and be moving. Ah, no, Martin, swim. Swim, mumbo. That was a knee level of river. Know your level. Now, look at the third one. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, where am I? Again, he measured 1,000. And brought me through what? The waste, the, the water. And 
uh, uh, sorry, the, the water came up to where? Waste level. What they be by? Know your size. Part time. Man, lira lirechi eniko konuliye. Because your neighbor is frying chicken every sun, Sunday. Uh, you, now you two are now saying, ah, ah, if I, me too, I'm going to. If you can't kill chicken, go and buy one kilo. And if you cannot afford one kilo, go and buy head and leg. One time, one of our sons that wanted to trek from Nigeria to Spain, when he came back, he said he stopped at Morocco. When he came back to Nigeria, I was telling him his experience. He said in Morocco, the people of Morocco don't eat head and legs of chicken. He said Nigerians that want to trek from Nigeria to Spain, when they get to Morocco, that's what they used to go and pack. They will pack it and they will boil it. They will eat it in the morning, eat it in the afternoon, eat it in the night. That's what they have been eating, waiting for the day they will cross into Spain. If you are going to conquer the spirit of the love, love of money, know your level. Are we true? We are taking it to verse 5. Are you learning something at all? We are true. Thank you. So, it stop at what? The waist level. At least with the waist level, you can swim. Because when we talk about the waist, you know, we'll try. Let's read on. Don't let people or situation drag you into the level that is not your size. Because life is in faces. I always tell our today's brothers, in the days when me and my wife started the relationship, what was raining was uh, um, uh, chicken George, chicken grotto. But we couldn't afford it. Me only afford there. And this is my wife to be. The only thing I could afford, Tabatin Lolly, there was one woman that sells rice at Okiado Road. Ara rice, 50 naira. Ibae, Lunon Tain, Sise, 20 naira. Elo Leron, 20 naira. Made be Fukuma Gelo. The highest thing that will happen is that I don't think I will marry you. And I will know that that woman is not my level. Hello? But why is it that today's boys are going into Yahoo? Why are they going into internet fraud? They are going into it because they want to, to then, they say, ah, there's, there's this babe, this babe I've seen. I just, need to, I just need to impress her. Don't let people drag you into the level that is not yours. Hello? Talk to me now. Now, don't forget where we started from. The love of money has one goal. Block your conscience. That's why at times I see some people, the way they, they behave. And you call yourself a child of God? I handled one case some time ago, and I was telling the, the young man, a Christian in your church is saying, please help me buy this fan. You told the Christian that this fan is 1,000 naira. When you bought it for 300 naira, you are not the one selling the fan. And even if you are the one selling it, you are a child of God. I'm not saying you don't make profit. But this person is, is paying you on trust. Ah, this person is my fellow brother in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Things like that could make people backslide. If you are doing business, and you are doing business with a Christian brother, Yes, you are doing business. You make your profit. But if somebody is saying, uh, you help me buy this thing on trust. If you are going to make business with that person, tell that person, I'm a businessman too. I'm a businessman too. Put it in my agenda. Come on, the people here, what they, and to my just like you are telling me now that, Papa, Papa, eh, 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 sir, I, I need this kind of your car. Can you help me buy it? And I, ah, don't worry, Mrs. Christopher, I'll get a car for you. She now say, I now get the car. Maybe for one million. And I'll come to Mrs. Krisova. I'm not selling car. She's telling me to help her to buy. Not because I sell car, but because she trusts me. And I'm telling the person, you know what? I'm going to tell her for 1.5 million. Miss you. Mrs. Krisova. You know, if I say Mrs. Krisova is 2 million, she won't price it. Why? Because she will say, this is my pastor. I 
And why? You want to leave a level that you have not reached. So in conquering love of money, what's the first thing you should do? Don't forget again. Let me hear you. Understand and appreciate your level per time. Hallelujah. Number two. Understand that evil association can steer up in you love for money. Don't associate with wrong people. If you are going to conquer love of money, beware of your kind of friends. I wrote on that. Who are your friends? Because if you are not careful, if you just meet just anybody, you'll be shocked. I always tell people, relationship has power to do one thing. To either influence you or you influence them. No, no relationship is neutral. I was sharing with somebody. She was, when we say two things, she will say, Walai. Ah. Walai, the Tibao. Or more long, don't say Walai. So we will now ask the person more questions. We now discover that the person just choose, chose a chronic Muslim as her best friend. Relationship has influence. Who are your friends? There are several pastors I've met. So when I say pastors, I've met so many pastors. But when we start to relate and I see that, ah, if I continue with these ones, they will put me in trouble. You know what I do? I reverse. A pastor was invited, one of my friends, he was invited another pastor. After the service, the pastor was thanking, ah, if you want one more job, you will go by yeah, look at that conversation. The guest pastor, so you know what he said in Yoruba? Oluri buruku di mwon. Bebe ba shetan atik ba mwon mwon ni dato mwon mwon le. Mwabi ilo, ki ba olu she she. I was asking the pastor. Ba olu she ba, olu lo wwa mwen ba yin be yin. Ba yin. Ah, ni yo la no. Only before the service, he asked for some things. E jo, eba me wa obi, obi abata. He asked for some things. While they were praying, while they were praying, he called prayer. He said, I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to do Oh no, look, plant here. And I don't blame him. If you don't go to where they will teach you truth, you will go to where they will lie to you. No barbarous in My friend said there's one of his members are extremely stingy. When the man got to him, he said, Ah, he said, Nuna, yeah, madam. Come by, bye, bye. Go and bring so so and so. The woman did not go home. She opened her bag and dropped on the key without going home. You know what this my friend said? I won't tell you his name. He said, Oluri Buku no bring you. Kadema saw 1,000. Sure she couldn't feel it. Pastor, I'm going to buy him. I'm going to buy him. I'm going to buy Now, it took me counseling that pastor for him to stop. I have to counsel him. If you continue to work with this kind of man, you will make heaven. That was when he reversed. And that's where so many of you go for prayer. Watch your kind of friends. And see, every husband that is here, help your wives to watch their friends. If you notice Somebody you are not comfortable with around your wife, 
use prayer to separate them. That was what Adam would have done when he saw Dave, uh, uh, Eve using the serpent as a pet. But imagine Kiki, I will be Joali, Kulu won't like a jai, Jolo won't like. Come at it, Joa Masoro. Nah, I junior will be like, I junior will be like. I be cook by you, we will be. Adam didn't pay attention. And eventually, imagine what that woman, the, the, the servant did, he drove them out of the garden. May your eyes be open to discover every wrong association around you in the name of Jesus. So to conquer love of money, understand that evil association needs to be separated from. Number three, understand that the entire law of God hangs on two things. Love for God and love for humanity. Love for God and love for humanity. Anything that will make you go against this is not from God. Now, what does that mean? Somebody came to Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, the Ten Commandments, which one is more important? Or, what is the summary? Of the, all the law. You know what Jesus said? He said we cannot be doing ten commandments in this covenant. But what we do is this. All the law and prophets are under this. Love the Lord your God. All your heart. Love your neighbor with your soul. Now listen. To conquer the spirit of the love of money. Always remember that if you say you love God. You know God. You must love your neighbor. So Anything that will make you make money, that will make you now hurt your neighbor. You know it's not God. Hello? You didn't understand me. If you're getting money will make you hurt your neighbor, it's not from God. So once you have that understanding, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now anything you want to do, you ask, if I'm the one, will I be happy? If you're not going to be happy, don't do it because you want to gain money. If you are not to be happy, don't do it because you want to gain money. That's how to conquer love of money. I've had several opportunities like that that people come. Some have come like that. You know, some, some members are so naive that people can just dupe them anyhow. Imagine somebody came to me and told me that they told him, a prophet told him, sell all that you have and go and sow as a seed. Everything you have, sell it. Your car, your house, go and sow it as a seed. I sat him down. I sat him down. Sit down. You know? Don't sell your house. Don't sell your car. You know what that word means? I started explaining. Give your total self to Jesus and serve him. Now, why did I do that? Because I love God. Why did I do that? Because I love him. But you know, love of money doesn't care. Once you are possessed with the spirit of love, love of money, you don't care who you step on. You don't even care that somebody is going to die. One of the days that I got afraid of uh, some people, somebody gave birth to a set of twins in an hospital. The doctor now said, you have to pay for the money of the operation. The young man was crying. Doctor, hold on, I don't have. I will go and look for money. So the doctor decided, I won't treat the babies. The, the babies had infection, and uh, they needed treatment. The doctor said, if you don't pay anything, the man said, okay, let me give little that I have. The doctor said, no. Beloved, they were looking like this. One of the twins died. The moment one of the twi twins died, the doctor said, if you don't go and look for money, this second one is going to die. The young man ran, was going from place to place. Succeeded to get a little change. They now started treatment. You know what the doctor now said? He said, now that one of the baby have died, did you not look for money? And just to show you how desperate for money people are now. Don't join that league. Number four. Understand that righteous money, I will explain, can 
only be acquired by legitimate work. Righteous money. What do we mean by righteous money? A kind of money that God is happy that you have can only be acquired by what we call legitimate work. What is legitimate work? The work that does not have sin in it. Five. Five. Close your ears and eyes to mock, mock your men. If you want to conquer the love of money, close your ears. You know why some people went to join cults? Because of what people have said. They have abused them. Ah, once hello me and pastor, the bam moro, ton so see me. Ah, anywhere kubaje go mo go money ma she. Tomorrow go mo ma she. To the ton so let the people that are speaking speak. You just follow God's pace for you. So close, close your ears and eyes to the mockery of men. Please, I beg you, close your ears. Are they mocking you in your in-law's place? Close your ears. Your time will come. Tell your neighbor, my time will come. Just like what the choir sang this morning. Your time will come. Are they mocking you among your friends? Close your ears. Your time will come. Are uh, younger ones that are supposed to be behind you, have they gone ahead of you? And, you are, and they are saying, brother, 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 you better not let you are. And because of that, you are, close your ears. Because, see, people that are, do not understand how to undo the mockery of men into so many wrong things. The people that mock you today, when Jesus show up for you, will be those that will praise you tomorrow. Jesus will show up for you. That's one thing too. I always tell young waiting mothers, I want to watch you alone for more. Baba, we quit am on your bank where you can now. Abi, ha, want to think work for me. We draw a match here. Close your ears. When Elizabeth became pregnant, you know what she did? She went to hide. You know why she went to hide? She went to hide because. She was too ashamed because of what people have said. Ah, I want your sorrow. That boy, sir, go go and want to see be more. She was great on sorrow. I just say you must come on. But I your country, Elizabeth, to be who sent to my son, who went on there, John, who need to bomb me. Your glory will come. And lastly, number six, to conquer the love of money, be committed to your relationship with God. Be committed to your relationship with God. You know why? It is only in God you can find true comfort. Only in God. And it is only in God you can find true glory. You just stay with him. In his due season, he will know how to lift you. Now, as I summarize, Judas, will have, we all will have been reading about one of Judas' books today. If he had not allowed the spirit of the love of money, he ate his future. Don't eat your future today. Conquer love of money. Allow God to lead you. Follow his process. There's what we call money by legitimate means. Oh, wow. But you just stay with God. Don't be carried away by, ah, ah, that man started business yesterday. Don't be carried away. You just continue to do what you are doing. Improve yourself in what you are doing. Open your ears to what God will tell you next. Relate well with people. And very soon, you will see that that future that we have been talking about, out will manifest for you. Show us on screen as I close. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. So that you will see what God has in stock for you. Amplify the keyboard for, for us. Shagada Baskinet. Eleven. This is verse one. Ah. 
Jeremiah 29, 11. 11. Let's be on our feet as we read together. Read it with understanding. One, two, and let's go. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future. And what? Hope. That's why money must not be your God. We used to sing this song many years ago. I want to try to remember the beginning. I know that I can stand. No. You don't have to worry. Thank you. Yes. And don't you be afraid. Preach to your neighbor. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. And if your heart is troubled, troubled okay just lift your hands and say i know that i will make it i know that i will stand no matter what may come my way my life is in hold your neighbor's hands now you look at him and preach the song to him after the count of three. Let's go. One, two, and three. You don't have. Aha. Uh -huh. And don't you be afraid. Aha. Uh -huh. Joy comes. Trouble doesn't last a while. Always. Okay. Okay, remember there's a friend in Jesus, yes. Who will wipe your tears away? And if your heart is broken, tell him. Just lift your hands and say, No! I know that I will stand. No matter what comes my way, My life is in your hands. Let's do it one more time. Aha. Uh -huh. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way. My life is in Thank you. I want to pray for you and close the service. The richest man in our country in those days. Look up. We were told that he, he had to change figures. Have you? That he cheated on paper to become rich. But when his calamity came, he was a friend of the then president of America. But when his calamity came, he was locked up in prison. Money could not save him. The power of money failed. Sherry, all of you here, hear me. Power of money used to fail. Though. That's why you must not allow your pursuit for money to take away God from you. Do you hear me? Money used to fail. Understand that power money used to fail. When he needed help, money could not save him. That was why he died in prison. Like somebody that didn't have money. I watched his various uh, service as he buried him in Islamic way. You know, they don't use coffin. A one-time popular musician, it, it is late now, Sonny Okosu, sat on his very side and was crying. He said, this is the man that wrote check for me. Not on check paper, on tissue paper in the aeroplane. He took a tissue, 
wrote an amount of money and told him to go to World Bank to collect it. But the power of money could not save him. Serve God. It is only the power of God that cannot fail. I come again. Serve God. It is only the power of God that can fail. Every other power can fail. Only the power of God cannot fail. Will you serve God? In your pursuit of money, do not allow it to affect your service to God. Because that's the only power that is constant and that will always be there at every season. I release you into this new week. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed or fashioned against you will prosper in the name of Jesus. In your going and coming this week, enjoy perfect divine protection in the name of Jesus. Your good expectation will not be cut off. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And amen. Can we share the grace together?